I just had to uh, endure. Maybe you have as well. Some economist geezer from the IFS been interviewed on um, Sky News this morning. And oh my God, these people are so disingenuous. I just, it's driving me flipping insane. Now, I'm, I talked about Brexit the other day and I said, well, people seem to care about Brexit anymore. They think it's over and done with. It's not. Brexit is going to keep biting us in the derriere and again and again and again. And until we admit what the causes of our well, tall bot turmoil is, we're never going to get over it. We're not. You know? Now, I admit we've got all these other issues going on as well. I admit we had the pandemic, got the war in Ukraine and what have you, and the war in Gaza and flipping Donald Trump potentially going back into the White House. We know there are a multitude of issues. I get that. But one thing we can't uh, ignore is the fact that the United Kingdom now has got this whopping great ball and chain dragging it yeah, backwards into negative growth. Now, I, I know people think oh, I'm a fanatic about it. You know, oh, I just love Brexit. No, I don't. I hate Brexit. In fact, somebody in the comments said, I love Brexit, Jasper. No, I don't love Brexit. I think it's a shit show. An absolute shit show. And it affects my family. It affects your family. It affects the country as a whole. I want the country to succeed. I don't want it to be a failure. Now, currently, we're seeing, oh, crikey, a massive loss in the UK. Not just in uh, monetary terms, but social cohesion, for instance. The divide, it continues. The right are getting stronger, the, the left are getting more left, and it's kind of like meeting in the middle now. The country's got a loss of output, economic output, of 6%. 6% and zero growth. And in fact, technology actually should be announced at some point, I would have thought they'd been honest with us, that we are in a recession. Since the last two quarters, we are literally... We're on the edge. We are in negative growth. I mean, this has been an economic hit to the country of 140 billion. And 30 billion just to the London alone. Now, this, this figure here is actually increasing ever since Brexit. Now, the average Brit cost to, the, to Brits is um, £2,000 a pop. Yeah. The average Londoner, 3400 a pop. You know? There's 300,000 less jobs in the UK now. And this is in an environment where we need 140,000 skilled workers. And although the government announced to them that they've managed to uh, keep to their pledge of 50,000 more nurses and all that, well, that's bollocks. We've lost more than 50,000 nurses because of Brexit. But I mean, we still need 40,000 odd nurses and 59,000 odd doctors, GPs. It's an absolute shit show, it really is. So we've got 140,000 uh, less skilled workers, that includes plumbers, builders, electricians, bricklayers, you know, cut and join. We just haven't got enough people to fulfil those trades, and yet we ain't got enough housing either. Blimey. And the Tories, this flipping... Oh, this guy's obviously a Tory, he was on the, in, on the IFS. And there is he going on about... All the causes of our economic uh, troubles, you know, lack of growth and what have you. So what does he say? Well, a lot of us are fallout um, increases in national debt because of the financial crash. OK, it did go up. But, you know, at the time when the Tories took over, we had a national debt of 770 billion. I can't believe I remember all this shit. Anyway, 770 billion. What's the national debt today? About 2.7 trillion. So on average since 2010, that's like 380 million a day. Are they going to have that on a little red... Bus mm, to the NHS for 80 million a day? No. No, but they found the money to buy a little red bus to put on the <laughs> during the blooming Brexit campaign to tell us all that 340 million a week to the NHS when that was all a lie in the first place. Even Nigel Farage said it was a lie. Oh, oh crikey. Anyway, this key's though, right? He goes on to say about this, OK, but the, uh, the lack of the growth in the UK and the national debt back in 2010, uh, you know, increased. Or after, you know, after the financial increase. So they had, ooh, terrible troubles they did, yeah. That brought us austerity, it did, yeah, and all that jazz. Right? He didn't mention about the fact that it's increased under the Tories. No. He hasn't mentioned that our economy is worse off now because of Brexit. He didn't even mention Brexit. 
Like, none of the media mentions Brexit. It's almost like they've been told not to. Across the board, even in the Guardian, they barely ever mention Brexit. They go on about the pandemic, they go on about the aftermath of that, they go on about the war in Ukraine, now it's hit um, food prices and what have you, but do they ever mention Brexit? Very rarely, even the Guardian. It's only the smaller papers that don't get that much, uh, well, footfall, that, that actually mention the, the, the Brexit had an issue. Well, back in 2016, Philip, and, um, Philip Hammond, who was the Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time, he was not a Brexiter, as you know, well, he said we're going to have to uh, borrow another, I think it was hundred and. Forty or hundred and ten billion pounds on as a direct result of Brexit. You know, remember the pound it, it crashed just after Brexit boat came in. He said the whole thing is a flip and shambles, and we're all been spun a line. They're just trying to damp us down. You know, don't talk down the country. I'm not talking down the country. I'm talking down Brexit and the flipping Tory party who are screwing our country. Not just our country. As in England, I mean Scotland as well, and Wales, and Northern Ireland, all been screwed by Brexit. It's horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And then we've got the Tories going on about, oh, well, we could get Donald Trump back into power again because then we might get a trade deal. Kerry Bannadock, she's blaming uh, Biden because we ain't got a trade deal. Well, let's be honest about this. Donald Trump also had no interest with a trade deal with the United Kingdom. We've got very little to offer the United States. We have a population of around 67 odd uh, a million, compared to the United States around 350 million. They've got an economy of 23 trillion, we've got an economy of 2.7. Uh, uh, not 2.7, what's our, our economy again? Our GDP, 2.7 trillion. Yeah, same as our GDP. Oh my God, same as our national debt. <laughs> that, that sounds a recipe for bankruptcy. Anyway, so why would they want to uh, give us a free trade deal? Doesn't make any sense. Especially when they do have their, their own sources of minerals and what have you, it's a very vast, expansive country, you know? They all have their own people. They've also got shortages as well of people that actually, you know, skilled people. It's an absolute mess. Brexit has broken Britain. And the Tories, have, well, they, they brought us Brexit. So, yes, they are a major part of the problem as well. Anyway, what do you say? Because I'm getting rather frustrated. When people tell me that people don't care about Brexit anymore, they don't care about Brexit because the media are telling them not to borrow about Brexit because it's never in the flipping media. It's just ridiculous. So we need more people, not less, to speak out about it and stop being dampened down just because the flipping press don't really care. Talk about it in the pubs. So, you know, the fact, the figures, just look at the figures. These aren't my figures I've just been shelling out to you. These are official figures and some of the government's own figures. It's just crazy. You know the definition of an idiot, don't you? It's somebody who makes the same mistake again and again and again. Cognitive dissonance, you could say. Dunning-Kruger effect, maybe. I don't know. Tribalism and all of that. Anyway, what say you? Please leave in the comments down below. As you can probably tell, I'm getting a little bit frustrated with all this. But we need more people to speak out against Brexit. And I'm going to carry on doing it as much as long as I can possibly do it. And if you want a sport channel, there is some um, GoFundMe's and also, um, GoFundMe's, I keep saying GoFundMe. No, um, buy me a coffees or Patreon or memberships and stuff like that. Because it obviously helps, you know, keeps the channel going. Because when I do it, the channel will obviously I'll have to do something else. Do something that, you know, pays the bills. Because it does take quite a lot of time. A lot of research doing these channels. And the same with all the other channels out there doing it. You know, you know, whether it be Fillmore, House of Different Bias or uh, Max Rospear, you know, they do a hell of a lot of research. And some of the other smaller channels as well, obviously. It takes time. And also, it dominates your life. It prevents you from being able to be relaxed. No wonder I've got flipping high blood pressure. <laughs> flipping hell. <sighs> anyway, if you want to support the channel, there's Patreon or Buy Us Coffee, but also memberships and... Um, it's a super chat thing as well, isn't there? Not super chat, like super thing. That's it. Anyway, it's very much appreciated if, if you can, you know, shed a little bit. But also, we are, it's actually more important, to be honest. Yeah, this is more important. We're doing a uh, rewilding here in France, which many of you may already know about. And basically, we're planting trees. We're planting a thousand trees on two hectares of land. And the, the hub isn't just about the trees. It's about providing habitat for the birds and the bees and stuff. I'm also uh, making some um, camera boxes for the birds as well. So I'll be streaming those live on my rewilding channel. There's a link in the description down below. Um, and the idea is that, you know, if you go by the GoFundMe link, 
make a contribution. It doesn't matter what it is. We will still put your name with whatever, uh, whether it be a tree or bird box or something like that. We'll still put your name with it, whatever you want. It doesn't matter how much it is. It all adds up and it goes towards the project. It's not just for us so we can buy trees or some of the trees we're actually doing from propagation ourselves. But it's just so we can maintain them because there's other things that we need to buy, such as the protections, like the stakes and all that sort of stuff, um, for the trees. I've got a whole load out there that needs staking. I mean, there's hundreds of them that we've already planted. And um, yeah, if you want to be a part of it, that, there is a GoFundMe link down below, and I will make a sign to go with your tree. Um, but also, it could be a memory of a loved one, for instance, your name, memory of a loved one, or a pet, or something like that, you know. Whatever. Anyway, it's a lovely project. And I'm also looking into I don't know if somebody could help us with this, if they know how I can go about it. Uh, I'm looking to tag, geotag, no words, so they've got, uh, you know, uh, coordinates for each tree. So how I find it accurately, because the, the distance between the trees is actually yeah, six, seven metres, so I've got to make sure it's obviously on, on point. Obviously, lot, no, obviously, it might not be a point. <laughs> so you can locate your own tree then, you see. You know where it is. I think it'd be pretty cool. Anyway, it's time for me to go, because I'm blabbering on, you know, so toodaloo. Blimey, Brexit. <laughs> it broke Britain. <laughs>